All right, Dardis, this episode of Rope Dart School kicks off the entire Rope Dart origin and history series. Before we begin, understand that the history of the rope dart is extremely fragmented and the goal of these videos is to try to put it all together into something that makes a little bit of sense. A complete transcript of this episode will be available on our blog at ropedarts.com. So this video is just laying a nice foundation for us to blast off from. I will be doing a summary of all the main points at the end of this video. Before we begin to uncover the mystery, let's clearly define what it is we're initially looking for. And that is the beginning and the subsequent history of a tool or weapon that features weights of some kind that are attached via cord or chain. Sit back, relax, and enjoy part one, the history of the rope dart. Known as a Chinese weapon, sheng biao, the rope dart consists of a heavy object, in this case a metal dart attached to a long rope. The exact inventor, day and place the rope dart was first created and used seems to be lost to time forever and perhaps was never known. While many facets of the rope dart origin mystery will likely remain, others may well be uncovered. The seemingly oldest known example of such a weapon or tool in Chinese history is the double-ended meteor. Similar to the South American bolus, a double-ended meteor is a hunting tool as well as throwing weapon that features a rope or cord with weighted ends. This weapon and hunting tool was used to entangle a person or animal. Throwing techniques included aiming at a target's legs to entangle and trip them. Other techniques included wrapping the bolus around the opponent's neck. I hypothesize that this twin-ended weapon, the double-ended meteor, would transition to a single-headed weapon at a time and place that remains unknown at present. Today, we call this weapon a meteor hammer, which was used exclusively for assault and whose head style, size, and weight went through their own variations. The meteor hammer the rope dart's closest sibling, perhaps fraternal twins, is a cord with a weighted metal ball or egg-shaped head. There are also records of melon, plum, or garlic-shaped heads, spiked heads, as well as multifaceted, geometric-shaped heads, some with as many as 14 sides, all of various sizes and weights. Another example of a single-headed weapon on a cord that somewhat resembles the rope dart is the feigao or flying claw. The feigao was used in times of war to snag the legs and feet of besieging soldiers. According to the book Soft Weapons, other potential origins of the rope dart include the bonefish fork, which as the name suggests was a dart attached to a long rope used to spear fish and pull them in. This all doesn't even consider that the real first head was probably just a humble rock tied to a cord. But what of the rope dart as we think of it today? It seems in the face of known evidence, the rope dart merely evolved from a meteor hammer. Perhaps the age old question of where did the rope dart come from is as simple to answer as going from a double ended hunting tool and weapon to a single ended hunting tool and weapon and then going from a round or bulbous shaped head to more of a dart or dagger-like shaped head. While old dart heads have surfaced, such as the one pictured to the right, meteor hammer or bulbous style heads seem to historically predate them. The unceremonious way the rope dart came to be is understandable when one thinks when and why the rope dart came about. The ancients probably did not care too much about what was on the end of a cord, just that something was on the end of a cord. Is it possible that a person fascinated by the meteor hammer but without one simply tied a cord to their personal dagger? Like today as it was then, the rope dart is considered a hidden weapon due to its small size and portability. It can be easily folded and worn on the body, under a jacket, in a pocket, or harnessed. Other attributes of the traditional rope dart include metal rings which attach the dart head to the rope as well as a flag. Accounts have the ancient rope dart weighing one caddy, which is a traditional unit of measurement used in China, 
which is approximately 1.3 pounds. Rope darts used in modern wushu today range from 5.5 ounces and up to one pound. Okay, daughters, that's kind of what we have for a basic background and outline for the rope dart and the meteor hammer. For now, let's do a quick summary of everything we went over. Number one, the inventor, day, time, and place of either the rope dart or a meteor hammer is lost to time forever. As of right now, we don't know. The oldest weapon or tool that somewhat resembles a rope dart or a meteor hammer are both the double-ended meteor in the Chinese arsenal and also the South American bolus. Now, what you need to understand about these weapons is that it wasn't always just, you know, two heads on a cord. Sometimes there were three heads, four heads, five heads. At some point, these multi-headed hunting tools transitioned into single-headed weapons of assault. Then, as it is today, we call that weapon of assault a meteor hammer. The meteor hammer went through all kinds of transitions on its own. Size, shape, weight, style, you name it. Debating what the first style of head used ever is pointless because the answer is a rock. I feel based on this, as well as the information that's coming up in the next videos, that the meteor hammer does predate the rope dart by a certain amount of years. I look forward to seeing all of you in part two, Uncertain Origins. Thanks for watching. Peace, love, dart life.